My name is Yano Blue. I am proud of who I am, and who I am does not need to be defined. But just so it's covered, let's try. We as humans are fond of labeling ourselves and others, largely as a means to explain our identities and interests succinctly, which can help us to find communities we feel safe in. Although I recognize the importance of labels, I don't like how limiting they can be, or how subjective they are. Everyone has their own connotations and hang-ups with language. And if you define yourself to someone using known labels, what those words mean to you, and what they mean to someone else, may greatly vary. Having spent my life in alternative communities throughout Northern California, I am lucky in that I have not often needed to define myself. The question I am most often asked is in regard to my race. I identify as mixed race. My usual answer is half Mexican, half European mutt with a smattering of Native American on both sides. My friend Sean is fond of saying, in the future, we will all be light brown. I do feel some connection to my cultural heritage, but I didn't grow up fully immersed in any one culture's traditions. So although my ethnic background informs my identity, I do not feel defined by it. The other question I sometimes get asked is, are you a boy or a girl? What I would like to respond with is, yes. But the people who ask this are children, and usually their parents will hush them as if they've asked something very rude. I tell them that I am a boy, and sometimes they'll have a follow-up question like, why are your nails painted? Why are you wearing earrings? Why do you have long hair? And I tell them that there's more than one way to be a boy, just as there's more than one way to be a girl. The other question I get asked, though not often, is about my sexual orientation. My romantic partner of six years is female. But I have my own hang-ups about language, and straight is not a word that either of us identify with. When it comes to sexual orientation, I find the labels hetero, homo, and bisexual to be limiting because they imply a binary system. You can choose both. You can choose the thing that is opposite you, or the thing that is the same as you. Even bisexuality is often thought not to exist because in a binary world, it's a gray area. And asexual doesn't even fit on this scale, which is something my sister identifies as, as have I at various points in my life. I am attracted, not necessarily sexually, to a wide range of people, and I like the label pansexual, or even pansensual, because it encompasses people whose bodies, intersex people for instance, and whose gender expressions do not fit into the narrow boxes of female or male. I also like the label quirky alone, coined by Sasha Kagan which is basically the idea that you like your own company and don't seek out romantic relationships. People who were quirky alone, but ended up in a relationship, might call themselves quirky together. One joke that gets made by me and by others when trying to define my sexuality is that I am a lesbian. My gender expression is often very feminine, and had I been born a woman, maybe I would identify as a lesbian. Since I was born a man, that feminine gender expression is what makes a lot of people assume that I am a gay man, I have had a very feminine side for as long as I can remember. And my childhood story of being dressed up like a girl is one shared by many a brother with an older sister. Unlike most of them, I never stopped playing dress up. I am extremely grateful to have such open parents, who always encouraged my interests, and from whom I never received any messages that playing with dresses, makeup, or dolls was inappropriate because I was a boy. Ever since I was little, I've had a sort of female alter ego. When I was a kid, the girl name I went by was Crystal, or Chrissy. I was always jealous of the label Tomboy, and wanted an equivalent for a boy who was into girly things. In an effort to gender swap Tomboy, I called myself a Chrissy girl. Since then, the term Jane girl has emerged. Being a man who wears women's clothing, some people might define me as a cross-dresser. I find cross-dressing to be an inadequate term because, again, it is rooted in a binary system, you are one thing, and you dress as the other. I like the word transvestite because I associate it with Tim Curry and Eddie Izzard. But there's a fetishism attached to the term which I don't identify with. While we are on words that start with trans, let's talk about transsexual. Someone who is transsexual is often thought of as F to M or M to F, meaning female to male or vice versa. Trans people are often further categorized into being pre-op or post-op, op meaning operative or operation although there are plenty of people who identify as trans who have no intention of surgically altering their bodies. All of this language is still firmly grounded in a binary system. Transgender is often used interchangeably with transsexual, but whereas transsexual implies a change in your sex or body, 
Transgender can simply mean someone who doesn't identify with the cultural conventions of gender. That's me. Because transgender means many things to many people, if I were to tell someone that I identified as transgender, they would likely have a different meaning in mind than I did. The opposite of transgender is cisgender, which is the idea that your body, the gender you were assigned at birth, and your identity all match. Once again, having cis on the other side of trans creates a binary system that, once again, I'm not sure where I fit into. 